Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today's TV show that we will be reviewing is Altered Carbon Episode 7, titled Nora Inu. But before I get into the review, if you are enjoying the content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell for notifications. I will greatly appreciate it. And if you're not caught up with Altered Carbon or aren't familiar with this show, consider this your spoiler warning. And now, let's get on to this review. So, in this episode, it's basically a flashback. And it basically plugging in the holes that we had from episode 1, 2, and 3. Episodes 4, 5, 6, and 7 have all been filling in the backstory and giving us a full picture of what the events are happening so in this one we go and we have a full flashback well before the flashback we find out that Kovac's sister obviously in episode six saves them and Kovac is coming in and out of consciousness and she basically tells him like hey we're gonna have to kill this sleeve and put you in another sleeve but Kovac knows that the, the sleeve that he's wearing is really, really important to Ortega. And he tells her like, hey, no, this, this sleeve, you know, you have to save it. So Kovac's sister actually saves it. And we see Kovac in his sleep state. I'm assuming that's when we have the flashback and his memory. It's it's more of editing in, the, in a clever way of, of storytelling. I'm sure that he didn't flash right, you know, back and replayed everything. But it's given us the illusion that he was. And we find out how when he was a kid, he protected his sister and he killed her abusive stepdad for killing his mom and then like abusing his sister and he blows out his stack. Now the stack, I know I haven't been saying it through the whole reviews, but I've been calling it the magic vertebrae. It basically called a stack. So finally after seven episodes, it stuck to my head. Um, so he basically destroys the stack and you know, like, you know, even though you're doing it in self protection, he still gets picked up by the police in that time. And he explains to the officer like, hey, you know, I was just trying to protect my sister after this guy killed my mom. And this this officer was one of the first officers we get introduced, I think, in episode one right off the bat. And he's hunting a different sleeve that Takashi is in um, when we meet him, but basically it's that same cop talking to Takashi as a kid. And he says, look, I'll, I'll do a deal with you. If you join us and I'll train you, your sister will be safe and she'll be unharmed. And he basically tells Takashi like, Hey, I believe you. I believe that you were trying to defend your sister. So he, he, you know, shakes his hand and he agrees to that, to that deal. So he's assuming that his sister is going to be taken care of. But one of the stipulations is that they can never see her again or they can never be together again. And he plays it off and saying, hey, for her protection, you, you can't let her know what you're going to do. That way it could you could be protected. So obviously, like I said, he agrees to it. And we see a little montage to where he gets put into this uh, sleep state and the officer tells them before that he says hey tomorrow you'll wake up in an adult's body so they're basically going to remove that stack that he has as a boy and putting in him into the takashi that we are a full the the, the the full adult version of takashi and he basically becomes part of this the the i'm calling them cops but there's like a name for them but it's basically like the army of that time so he joins them thinking that they they have done good and you and you can see how they're going
going into this, uh, I don't know if it's an off-world planet, but they're basically like a sting operation. And in this sting, again, I'm kind of, it bothers me that the, 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 the Yakuza are still around, but hey, you know what? I, uh, there's been secret organizations that have lived on for 500 years, a thousand years. Who am I to judge that? But anyway, so they're basically going against the Yakuza. So it's like the Yakuza versus the army or the, the space army, I guess, if you want to call it that. And Takashi's part of the space army and, and they're going to fight this Yakuza. And all of a sudden, you know, as they're tearing down everyone from the Yakuza, some woman's voice comes on. It's like, hey, put your guns down or I'm going to blow your stack out. And he sees the reflection and he sees that this woman has a chain and that we see in a flashback episode. I think it was episode four. And he says, where did you get that that uh, necklace? It belonged to my mother. And that's when she the, the woman gets taken aback and he gets taken back and they look at each other and they realize that it's Takashi's sister. And basically at that point, you know, they have this reunion, but it's short lived because now they have to fight the space army and the Yakuza and they both kick ass and just destroy and just take out both of them in a matter of minutes. Just c completely love that kind of gave me like that, um, a black widow feel from Takashi's sister love i i do lo like her acting and and how badass she is and and women in this show are really really badass and i do like that aspect about this show and how they portray women as not these docile innocent little i mean uh, they are some with the, the higher class but the women as far as like the actresses they're total kick-ass in this in this uh in this uh, tv show definitely props to that but anyways um, they, they take them out and they go on the run. Obviously they just took out everyone and we, we find out how they came into, into the, I guess the rebellion that is headed by the, again, I can't remember her name. I wish I could, but the actress Goldsberry, I can't remember her name in the show, but it's basically the, the, the she's the, the leader of the resistance and we get how, she basically took them in and, and she knew who, who they were and basically says, Hey, join us. We could use someone like you. And obviously like every story, I, the writing was kind of suspect in this one when they were on that bridge scene, maybe it became evident to everyone because she was like, what would you do for revenge? Anything. And, and then, you know, how would you do, what would you do to get your revenge back? Everything or something like that. And I, I literally was as, as she was talking to him, I was saying what was coming out of his mouth. So the script writing was very basic. Maybe that was by design, but I picked it up that this, or at least in that, in that, uh, in that bridge scene. But anyway, so they agreed, but the sisters from the whole get go, she is not with the plan. She's like, Hey, let's try to get out. Let's kill these guys. But you know, Takashi's like, no, you know, let's, let's see, you know, let's try to make friends. And there's a little montage where they start assimilating to this new group and they get the training and stuff. And again, throughout this whole time, the sisters kind of like very not okay. So anyways, you get to a point where the Goldsberry character says, Hey, it's time to strike and we are going to destroy immortality. Like she wants everyone to be human. And she comes up with a plan saying, Hey, no matter if you're rich or poor, what we're going to do is download a program that is going to make death happen. And for sure, we're all going to become human and everyone rich and poor gets a hundred years. That's it. And then you die. So when there's no hierarchy, you can't pay to live forever. But so she wants to end all this immortality aspect. She goes, we're not meant to live forever. We're meant to have an end. And she develops this plan and she is not, like I said, Takashi's sister is not on board with any of this. So there's like, she says, Hey, I need a team of five. We're going to strike. And they go into it. And obviously they, they, Takashi volunteers and his sister's like, what are you doing? And she goes, Hey, I want to make a change. And, you know, he volunteers along with five other, you know, 
volunteers for the resistance. And then we cut into a scene where they're actually going in this mission, but Takashi somehow gets, you know, too far behind and he gets kidnapped. So then he's back in a virtual interrogation room with our officer that keeps on, you know, appearing since episode one. And I believe his name is Jager or something like that. For if I remember the name correctly, but anyways, actually, no, I think, I think that's wrong. It's not Jaeger. Anyways, the actor is, is, is a uh, Bernhardt and he's interrogating Takashi and then Goldsberry appears and he's like freaking out because he's like, how are you in my system? And he tries, she tries to get uh, Takashi to wake up because he's been drugged and she, he, they, you have to like over, almost overcome the, the program where you're in this interrogation in, 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 in a virtual reality and to be able to come out and you have to overcome it with like very, very self discipline. And she's like, wake up, wake up. And you know, he wakes up and right before that, they're going to get killed by uh, the, the, the officer, the space officer, Bernhardt, the actor that plays him is about to destroy him. And they, they kind of go away and he wakes up and they, they escape. Right. And in this escape, you know, they, so they go back to their camp and then we have how Takashi and Goldsberry fall, fall in love and the sister sees them, you know, after they make love, you know, they wake up the next day and they're, you know, by a lake, beautiful scene, romantic. And the sister kind of sees that and is disgusted and kind of goes away. And then he tries to go after her, but he can't find her. And in this time that he's looking for her, we start seeing back at the camp, at the refugee camp, that everyone's kind of acting weird. And then we see these ships going in and start bombing and everything. And Takashi goes all the way back to camp because he wants to help. He's looking for his sister. He's looking to see what's going on. And he finds like this massacre scene. Everyone's dead and he can't figure out what's going on. But one of the refugees is alive actually a couple of girls that are refugees are alive and they like literally like are freaking out and saying that you can't understand what they're saying and they both kill each other and Takashi's like trying to figure out like what's going on and earlier in this scene when when, when Takashi got to the to the camp right after they were captured by the refugees he didn't trust them like there was like this animosity this macho bravado between the two but eventually they become good friends. Like all great storytelling happens and he's still alive, but you can see like he has a gunshot wound in his eye and we find out, he says, Oh, I did this to myself. It's in my head. It's in my hell. It's in my head. We all killed each other. We all kind of did it to ourselves. And he asked Takashi, like, Hey, you have to kill me. It's in my brain and it's hurting. And Takashi goes ahead and, and, and blows out his stack. So he, so he ends his suffering because you know, you do, you don't want to suffer like that. It's almost like a virus that's eating at their brain and, and causing them to, to malfunction and self harm. And they're doing this through the stack. So it's almost like they threw a virus for the refugees and it only affected. I don't understand why Takashi and why Goldsberry and why the sister didn't get affected, but they don't. So. He's, you know, he gets in, in contact of his, of Goldsberry and his sister, and they're like, you know, trying to escape. And he's like, they're trying to get Takashi to, to find a way to reach them for they all could escape, but they can. So Takashi says like, you guys have to get on the plane and go away and, and I'll hold them back. And you see Takashi's sister and, and Goldsberry character get on like this plane or futuristic envoy, um, ship, I guess. And they're escaping and then as he's happy and he, t and he kind of whispers to himself like you won't get them and as he's doing that the ship blows up and you're like oh my god and he's like also stunned and you see there's this you know uh, it, the camera work was too much of that spinning it was just kept on spinning and spinning and if I was watching this in a bigger TV I would have probably threw up that was just way too much spinning on that scene but I get it it was for dramatic effect, but that way, way, way too much spinning in that whole camera aspect of it. But 
uh, he manages to hide out and in the ashes and the, uh, the, the space cop that's been hunting him down kind of says, no matter how much you run, I will find you and whatnot. So then we cut to our Kovac when he's waking up, obviously after, you know, from the memory or, or the dream that he has. And he starts kind of flashbacking and as his sister's telling him, hey, you know, I heard there was this envoy. That's what they're called, envoys. And the refugees, that there was this envoy on the current time that we're seeing it, not flashing back. It's actually like Kovac in the, in the new sleeve that he has on now, waking up from the slashes. You know, he, he managed, she managed to save the sleeve and she tells him that, but there's a little dialogue and he keeps on, Kovac's kind of silent because he's putting all these things together. And he just says, hey, I'm gonna, you know, walk around and get something. And, and the sister kind of walks away. And Kovac enters this room where these, you know, uh, pods are at that you could put in a cryogenic sleep, sort of. You know, it's like they, they, the way, uh, like to preserve one's body, basically, like in hyper, in, 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 in a deep sleep, but it's all like, you know, frozen to preserve it, anyways. And he, you know, takes off the, because you can't see, obviously, because it's, uh, icy <laughs> for for better term so he wipes down and he starts realizing that these are people that he's been seeing already throughout his time uh, in this new sleeve like he, there was a body of the of the little girl that kind of got him in the museum the 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 person that we think is the main criminal also appears in in, in or he's in in that cryogenic state and he's like freaking out like what's going on and he turns around and he sees her sister looking back at him and she basically he's like he, he doesn't he, he can't understand what's going on and he, he basically sits down and says like you were with her at the end what did you do and she we, we flash back to the scene when they're escaping and we see that Takashi's sister double crossed Goldsberry's character and she what we saw earlier in the other episode in episode six where you could download yourself as a backup you know have a backup of yourself even though you you're you're physically still here so like like how we would back up a computer basically you could still work but you save it in a usb somewhere you save it in a backup somewhere up in the cloud in case something goes wrong with your computer that you could always find your work so it's basically that premise so as she double crossed, boom, you know, the, the ship blew up because she had like the laser beam. So she almost was working with the space army because she kind of sprung a deal. And, you know, Kovac at this point is stunned. And she says, you know, brother, I did it all for you. And that's the end of the scene. Like, talk about such a heavy episode. Like, I was not expecting that kind of a twist. Now I'm not an M Lam Shyamalan uh, or Shyamalan Malan, whatever his name is. I can't, you know, that horror movie. He's he's famous for weird ass twists in his movies, but I did not. And this is not his. He's not directing. It has nothing to do with this miniseries. But that twist was. He would be proud of that kind of a twist. I'm just saying. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. Cause it was. It got me. I was like. What in the hell am I? It, 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 what, what what just happened? So I can't wait for episode seven to watch it. Wow, what a what a twist! What an episode! Great, great, great. Again, I've said this already. If you if you're not familiar with this show or or are and heard about it, just do yourself a favor and check it out. If you're a fan of sci science fiction and a great action the story like i said the first three episodes it's very confusing but these episodes like i said four five six and seven now will fill it in perfectly and you will not be disappointed you'll understand why they kept you in the dark it just enriches the story a little bit more when these reveals start happening as you move along so loved it highly recommend it go out and watch it can't wait to watch the next episode and so with that said let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this episode and that's a wrap